2020, am I right? <laughs> I mean, I can't get a decent haircut. I, I'd probably have a beard if I didn't have the hair follicles of a prepubescent teen permanently on my face at all times, no matter what my age. Um, but yeah, you know, now I look like like a, like a hobo or somebody who's done too much crack or so. I don't know. My point being, this year was brutal. I mean, brutal. I, I've never gone through a year like this. I, it, it's, it's left me battered and beaten on the side of the road, as I'm sure many of you are. So what this is going to be, as I look back at the year that was 2020, so we can purge this MFR and move on. So, uh, yeah, not the happiest of videos. This, unfortunately, is the 2020 recap special. We're going to go through some of the stuff that happened this year, and we are going to purge it and remember it, but not let it hold us back. So let's get into that. Let's roll that bumper. I don't even have the energy to point over there. But, uh... So we start out like every year starts out. January 1st, a lot of optimism. The ball dropped. Everybody's hungover, but uh, optimistic. We got our New Year's resolution, and we should have seen how the world was coming into this year because already Hong Kong is in protests, and the entire continent of Australia basically was on fire. Coming into this year, we should have known what lay ahead. Let's move on. So whether you agree with it or not, um, we bombed a Baghdad airport, the U.S. that is, uh, to assassinate Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. I'm sure he won't mind at this point. And worldwide trending on Twitter was World War III, and that only escalated when two days later, Turkey invaded Libya. So, yeah, it looked like within five days of the new year, the world was going to go into an all-out war. To add to that, a Ukrainian flight crashed, a passenger flight killing 176 people on board. A volcano in the Philippines decided it was a good time to erupt, and so that displaced hundreds of thousands of people in the Philippines. And then was the tragic helicopter crash of Kobe Bryant, who was on his way to his daughter's basketball game, and his daughter was on that helicopter as well. That one hit, especially here in the U.S., that's all I can really say because that's my perspective. That one hit as hard because uh, it seemed like he was turning a, a, turning a new chapter in his life and he was just getting on their way and then his daughter never got a chance to even get that life off the ground. It was just tragic. It was, it was a sign of things to come, unfortunately, for 2020, but uh, it, that one really hit a lot of people in the gut. After that, uh, England decided to withdraw from the United Kingdom officially. All this stuff happened in the first month of 2020. Um, yeah, it, it was a brutal year. I don't know how many times you're going to hear me say that. That was all in the first month. That was all in January of 2020. Let's move on. So on February 11th, um, the World Health Organization finally got a name to the novel coronavirus that started going around, and they named it COVID-19. As I'm sure probably a lot of you know by now, um, there's more of that to come. With the news of COVID-19, the Dow plunged 1,100 points, 4.4%, which is the biggest single-day drop in the stock market's history. But if you thought that was a one-time thing, we set that record seven more times in the next month and a half, which goes to show you how bad the stock market was by about the middle of March. It was at this time that the World Health Organization said, uh, you know, this thing's not going away. This is a pandemic. You know, they, they said COVID-19 was officially a pandemic. And around March, it started to become real here in the United States. It already was around the rest of the world. But that's when things started really going crazy here. People started buying up all the toilet paper and hand sanitizer. And there weren't enough masks to go around for people that were working in hospitals. So they told us not to wear masks. But then later they told us we have to wear masks once the masks came back. It was a lot of, a lot of scared people. And... Uh, and we really needed to step up and come together like like the generation of World War II did. And uh, 
I'll leave it up to you to decide whether we did that or not. So by April 20th, uh, COVID-19 had reached 1 million people. And uh, it's going to be a theme for this year. So instead of giving you COVID updates all throughout the year, I'm just going to do a COVID overhaul at the end because we could talk about COVID throughout this entire video um, because it ravaged the entire year. So instead of doing that, I'll give you a COVID overview at the end of the list I have going. After that, there was a... Uh, a mudslide in central China that hit a passenger train injuring over a hundred people and killing at least one. One more COVID thing because it, it goes in right here. Um, uh, the United States pulled funding for the World Health Organization in the middle of a pandemic, which is probably not a good thing. I don't want to get too political on this channel, but I just think that, uh, you know, timing sometimes it, it can factor into these decisions. Somalia was hit with floods that were record-breaking for the time, and uh, that killed 27 people and displaced over a million people in Somalia. Then there was Cyclone Amphan, which killed 128 people and did $13.7 billion worth of damage to the Indian area that it affected. A Pakistani aircraft crashed. That was a passenger flight killing 97 people. And then we get to probably, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to categorize events, but this was a big one. Um, George Floyd um, was brutally knelt on for long periods of time until he could no longer breathe and died in the hands of law enforcement officers, which triggered riots worldwide. And I live in Portland, so these riots and protests, I only call them riots because they ended up as riots, but the protests lasted here. I mean, they just stopped recently. And uh, yeah, that, that, that one hurt a lot of communities. It, I can't imagine what people go through that have had to go through these, these struggles, but I can empathize. Um, that one should not have happened, nor should, you know, Brianna Taylor. All I, I'm not I'm not going to list them all here. You, you guys have seen all the news. But, yeah, another fun thing that happened in 2020. Um, yeah, that that one rocked this country. The, the police, they're here to protect us. They're here to protect and serve. And it seems more like they want to protect and dominate they don't want to serve but there's a lot of good police officers too it's just the bad ones make it so hard that's all i'm really going to say on this um yeah that's all i'm going to say on that topic then the good old murder hornet showed up remember the murder hornets yes uh up in my neck of the woods again up in uh washington the sightings of giant japanese hornets showed up or as the media called them, murder hornets. And uh, while that wasn't a thing, it was just at the time like, what else is happening right now? To go along with uh, 2020, uh, if COVID wasn't enough, Ebola has come back on the radar and there's starting to be uh, Ebola outbreaks in certain parts of the world. There is a giant Russian oil spill up in the Arctic Circle that displaced 11,000 tons of oil back into the water streams of the uh, Arctic Circle. So yeah, that's fun. A 7.5 earthquake rocks Mexico. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's just beating me over the head, but we're going to get past this. I, I have to get them all out. This isn't even everything. These are the big things. Got to get them all out so we can get past them. All right. That's the point of this video. It's not to dwell. It's to remember and move past. So let's move on. There was a political Twitter hack and celebrity Twitter hack, which all turned out to be a giant Bitcoin scam, which uh, anytime our our elected officials are hacked. It's never a good thing. Luckily, it just was idiots who wanted to make money on Bitcoin scams. But uh, next time could be worse, you know, so that was alarming. On uh, August 28th, seven days after my birthday, uh, we got another gut punch with uh, Chadwick Boseman passing away, the Bla Black Panther himself. It's these people that seem to be really good people that die so young, those are the ones that just come out of left field and just make you feel deflated. And uh, that that was definitely one of them. 
Um, over the summer, my mom's house almost burnt down because of the West Coast fires. I live up here in Oregon, but California really, really got hit hard, as well as Oregon and Washington. And those fires were out of control. During a time in Portland, we had the worst air quality in the world for a good five-day stretch because all that smoke came over the top of Portland, and then the wind stopped. So it sat there for five days, and uh, it seems like the apocalypse was here and and there was nothing we could do about it, pretty much. But uh, honestly, I'm lucky, and my mom's lucky. Her house, I was trying to shoot a film there at the exact same time. Um, so we pushed that back, but no harm, no foul. There's a lot of people whose homes got destroyed and had to be displaced. So I consider me and my family lucky that that didn't happen. Um, but a lot of you, unfortunately, that's, that's terrible. On September 18th... Uh, Women's rights activist Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Supreme Court judge, passed away, and that was another gut punch to the country. Um, it, it, at this point, it just seemed like we couldn't catch a break, and that was just another thing that in a normal year, it'd be like, okay, she was she was getting up there in age, but in this year, it was like, come on, you're now you're just toppling, you're 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 kicking us while we're down. Okay, now I'm going to we're getting close. There was a Turkish earthquake. That ravaged that area. There were floods in China that killed over 100 people. We get to Christmas. We think we're getting out of the woods. No, there's a Christmas bombing. And then the day after that, one of one of my favorite wrestlers on the AEW brand, uh, Jonathan Hubert, who went by the name Brody Lee in AEW and in the WWE went by Luke Harper, who seemed to be beloved by everybody he, who crossed his path, died of a non-COVID-related lung infection. And it, it that that's that's what I got for this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through some people that passed away. I I just reading that list is hard. I, I it's been a rough year. It, it it it's been a rough a rough year. Um, let me let me go through some of the people who have passed away this year. Neil Peart, who was one of the greatest rock drummers in history, the band Rush. Rocky Johnson, who was a professional wrestler, father of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Jim Lair of The Lair Report. Kobe Bryant of NBA basketball fame, obviously. Actor Kirk Douglas. Baseball player Tony Fernandez. One of the best-selling authors of history, Clive Cussler. From inside the actor studio, James Lipton. One of the greatest selling country music stars that there's ever been, Kenny Rogers. Baseball player Al Kaline. Actor Brian Dennehy. Super Bowl winning coach Don Shula. One of the greatest rock and roll pianists there ever was, Little Richard. Jerry Stiller from Seinfeld, from King of Queens. Um, somebody who made me laugh over the years many times. English actor Ian Holm. Actor Carl Reiner. Country music star Charlie Daniels. Actress Kelly Preston. Regis Philbin. One thing I wanted to say is uh, when I think of Regis, I always think of my mom because uh, when my mom was at work, she would always tape Regis and Kathy Lee throughout the week. And so it was on in my house all weekend long. And uh, so when I think Regis, I think of my mom. Chadwick Boseman, obviously we talked about him, a uh, great actor. From the Portland Trailblazers, Cliff, Uncle Cliffy Robinson. Hall of Famer, Tom Seaver. Hall of Famer, Lou Brock. A lady who needs no introduction, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Hall of Fame pitcher, Bob Gibson. One of the greatest guitarists to ever live, Eddie Van Halen. Hall of Fame pitcher Whitey Ford. Actor and Scottish extraordinaire Sean Connery, James Bond himself. From Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. From the WWE and wrestling in general, Pat Patterson. And from AEW, John Huber, also known as Brody Lee. Okay, COVID. Um, I'm not going to go in depth in COVID because, I mean, this video is getting long enough with depressing crap as it is. 
COVID was the glue that held this crappy year together. Um, it seems like we, uh, we as a people, have made every bad step you can make with COVID. First, we bottled the toilet paper and hand sanitizers. Um, then we want to fight about masks. Well, I'm not taking sides. I'm just saying fighting about stuff that you wear on your face is silly. Um, yeah, then the uh, it affected our stock markets. Uh, me personally, um, the film industry shut down. So I had to get a day job for the first time in eight years. And I'm still at that day job because... There's just not a lot of filming going on right now. Um, but that's small in comparison to somebody that like put their whole life's earnings into a small business and had to shut it down through no fault of their own. A successful small business because they just can't open their doors and aren't getting any help. These things are tragic. And all I'm going to say about COVID is it, it, it's a COVID problem. It's not a, it's not a problem. It's a COVID problem. I hate COVID. I think we all do at this point. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't want to get too down in the dumps with COVID-19. We've all gone through it. We know what it's about. So uh, why, am I, why am I bringing all this crap up again? Well, like I said at the top of this video, this is a purge. And in order to purge something, we have to remember it so we don't fall into these problems again. The good thing is, if you're watching this video... You're watching this video. You've made it through all this stuff. A lot of people can't say the same thing. And so we need to be better than we were this year. This year, it showed us who humanity was, and we need to be better as a group. We need to stop being divided, and I think we will be. There's good things on the horizon. For one, for me, the Dodgers won the World Series. That's the first time in 32 years for me. That was a good thing. The Oregon Ducks won the Pac-12 championship. That's another good thing. Again, these are for me. A lot of personal bad things happened to me. My, my beloved grandmother passed away this year. Um, it seemed like everybody on a personal level and a global level were just having horrible years. And I, 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 I'm glad we're through it because it looks like we're on the downside of COVID-19. Hopefully by the spring, it will just be a memory. We can get back to normal, man. Uh, hopefully 2021 is going to uh, be just as good as this year was bad. And I think we can make it. I, I think we can make it that way because we've shown we're resilient as a people. We made it through this horrible year. And uh, I just want to leave you with this, man. I, I say it every time. It's not a competition. Let's all help each other and rise together. I'll see you guys for a normal video next week. I know this was rough. Thank you for sharing on it with me. We're purging this damn damn year and we're moving forward to better things i'll see you guys in 2021 where we will no longer have to say we are living through the worst year in history see you guys next time